everybody. Good morning to you. How are you? It's currently almost six in the morning here in New Mexico. And I just woke up and Booger is having a breakfast pretty much right behind me. She's eating her. Uh, there she is. There's the girl. She's having her breakfast. So I went to bed early last night and Foodie did a live stream with Salah. And apparently it's Salah's birthday. I watched the video this morning to see if there was anything react worthy. And I'm not going to lie to you. It felt awkward. <laughs> it felt really, really awkward. It's his birthday. He's on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel. But yet, despite the fact that it's his birthday, he's not on his channel doing a gaming stream or celebrating his birthday. You know, making a special event for himself and his viewers. Where is he? He's with Foodie while she's live streaming on her channel, acting as if it's her birthday. And there's no cake. There's no kind of celebration. There are no gifts. <laughs> there's just, there's nothing going on. Now, all of us that have been watching Foodie for a minute, we know that uh, Salah has been putting his foot down, telling her no more takeout. Do I think it's because of her health? Honestly, no. I think it has more to do with the fact that she just went wild spending money in Thailand and she spent way too much. And he just had his put it, he had to put a, the foot down and say, listen, you spent way too much in Thailand. We can't afford the takeout right now. It's it's going to be quite a while before you get paid again. So no takeout for her. And it's his birthday. And he didn't get a cake. More than likely because he knew that if he got a cake, he would not be the one eating it. Foodie would eat most of it. I mean, those of us that saw the Thailand footage, she put away a huge slice of cake within four bites. What do you think she's going to do to an entire birthday cake? So, yeah, the live stream itself was awkward. <laughs> it was so awkward. And I'm here for it. I'm here for the awkwardness. I am here for the silence. I'm here for the suffering. That's our dessert. So I'm not going to deny anybody on my channel their dessert. I'm not going to deny myself the dessert. I mean, she's been boring I'll take all the sweet from her that I can get. And this stream offers plenty of it. So before we get into the stream itself, how about we do this? That we get into all the Twitter stuff because there's a lot. And then I'm going to bring up a really excellent clip from a channel by the name of Marley Hendricks. Really excellent, excellent clip they put together. And then we'll get into the foodie Salah birthday stream. Okay. How about we just do that? And I will leave a link down below for Marley's video. If you've never heard of Marley Hendricks, definitely recommend checking them out. Excellent, excellent channel. Always putting good stuff together. Sub up to him. Give him a like, give him a comment. Tell him that you like the video because it was, it was really well done. Okay. So let's start with the Twitter stuff. First, let me just make sure that I am where I need to be. I'm not. Shame on me. That's okay. I can get there real quick. Okay. So, going back. Perfect. All right. So, for those of you that are on Twitter X and you would like to find me on Twitter X, there's my handle. Wow, girl, Sarah. Okay, this is something from Fat Cow, and Fat Cow has a channel on YouTube called Fat Cow Chronicles, and Fat Cow, you've been putting out some amazing content, absolutely amazing. Uh, I saw one clip that you said that you 
were a journalist at one point. I can easily see that just the way you put things together. Really well done stuff, Fat Cal. Uh, Fat Cal says, looks like somebody thought they were going to be taken out for a birthday dinner and was told it wasn't happening. So put on their war paint, went online and pretended that everything was simply peachy. Foodie beauty. P.S. Of course, Muslims celebrate birthdays, you numb nuts. <laughs> Chantal thinks every occasion has to involve food. Oh, it's your birthday? That means you're going to take me out and get fed. No, it doesn't have to mean that at all. You can easily have a birthday celebration and food is nowhere in sight. Sometimes people have birthdays and go out and get a few drinks and that's all it has to be. Sometimes it's just exchanging a gift or two and that's all it has to be. Food does not have to be involved in a birthday. It sometimes is. It sometimes isn't. So I guess she presumed they were going to go out for a birthday dinner and she would get a massive amount of food and she didn't. So maybe the thought was that if she went online and if she bored Salah enough that he would just give her food just to shut her up. I don't know. And I've also heard that Muslims celebrate birthdays. Okay, so fondue, pondu. Booger, what are you doing? Y'all give me just a second. Okay, sorry about that. The house that I live in has four or five other cats, including a torty half-grown kitten. And she was playing with Booger, doing that thing where... They put their paws underneath the door, the space underneath the door, and they batted each other. So <laughs> the kitten was just being playful. Anyway, going back to, let's go back to Twitter. Let's see. So Fondue Pondu says, Chantal getting absolutely eviscerated over Salad lying about the home gym in the chat. With Salad going mute. But Salad uses the word friggin' now. Sure, okay. Yeah, that's a word he's never used before. So the rumor is there are different people that take over that account and talk for him. When either A, he's not around. Or B, he just doesn't want to be in the chat. Like different people have different access to that account. And he's using the word friggin'. That sounds like somebody else's word, but let's go back to the topic at hand, the home gym. So Foodie is, in my opinion, she's about 550 pounds, maybe heavier. And I say this because she was almost 400 pounds when she was with BB back in 2018. And anybody could pull up any kind of footage, any kind of clips, and there are many out there of how she looked and how she moved and how she breathed back in the BB days and compare them to how she looks now. And you can see a marked difference between the two. If you look at her then versus now, that's about 150, 200 pounds difference. So she was almost 400 pounds in 2018. Her last true weigh-in was 377 pounds. So she was 23 pounds away from being 400 pounds. And she's put on well over 100 pounds in Kuwait, almost 200. So why am I bringing that up? Well, because at Foodie's weight, as heavy as she is, she would have to go for equipment that can take her weight, including a treadmill. And treadmills that can support 500 pounds, 600 pounds, they're not cheap. You know, you have to spend easily about $700, $800 to $1,000 on a treadmill. Let's just say it's their gym is nothing but a treadmill. Do you think Salad is going to drop $1,000 on a treadmill knowing full well that Foodie is not going to use it? And let's also consider the fact that she's on a tourist visa. She's not a resident. Why spend that much money on something 
for someone that A, they're not going to use it. B, there's a possibility at some point they might have their passport stamped to where they can't come back. So does anybody think he's going to drop a grand on a piece of equipment that is meant for her, but yet she's not a resident? Nah. Nah. There's a gym downstairs she doesn't even use. And even if she doesn't want to use the gym, she could go for walks. She's not even going for walks. She could do low impact aerobics in her room, in that apartment. Just put on some YouTube videos and do some low impact aerobics and do a calorie deficit and she would drop weight like crazy. And then maybe if she dropped a couple hundred pounds, she could use the regular gym equipment down in the gym, in the building for free. So what would be the sense in buying a treadmill? When there's so much stuff that she could do on her own, practically for free. Okay, moving on. This is from Failure to Lunch, saying, have a great day, lovelies. Okay, so let's look. Uh, Karma to Lunch says, it can be hard to watch Foodie Beauty's content when it seems she never gets any repercussions for her abhorrent actions. But remember, this woman had to fly halfway across the world to find a man that would fake marry her. She is slowly eating herself to blank while taking no accountability for her actions. She lives with a man that works from home all day until he needs to go on holiday with her. Then he is suddenly needed at his job, leading his morbidly obese wife to gorge herself on all the things her supposed faith completely forbids. Karma for Fodi doesn't necessarily mean her losing her channel. She's getting her karma in a different way, and Salad is getting his too. This is true. A lot of people are yelling and screaming about when is she going to get her karma. I've known for a while. Karma showed up at the party a long time ago, and she's been working. You know, she's sitting in a chair in the corner with her phone texting different people like justice and judgment, keeping an eye on foodie, taking notes, saying, are you seeing all this? Justice and judgment have been watching and going, yeah, we see it. We're taking notes too. So things have been happening, y'all. Her health is getting worse. Her views are going down. Her money is getting worse. I mean, things are crumbling from the inside, but they are happening. So for those who are asking for karma, karma is here. Karma has been here. She's just not delivering the knockout punch right now, but she has been at work. She's been doing her thing. Uh, uh, she's getting her karma in a different way and Salad is getting his too. This man claims to be a devoted Muslim who wants to travel and have children Yet he has chosen to involve himself with a woman who can have children and who cannot manage a one minute walk without getting out of breath. Their karma is each other. I hope they stay together forever because resentment is a powerful emotion that will only grow with time. Enjoy those hundred dollars super chats, cutie, because funerals are doggone expensive. Wow. You're not lying. Funerals are expensive. And the people that are giving her super chats, the feedies, the ones that are encouraging her to eat, are they going to be there to pay for her hospital bills? If something medical happens, are they going to be there to pay for her funeral? Of course not. They're only going to pay for her to eat because that's part of their fetish and they're getting something out of it. But if she goes in the hospital or if she ends up in the ground, that's not fun for them. And they're not going to pay for that. So moving on. And thank you for posting that <clears throat> failure to lunch. Tara Lee says foodie beauty couldn't even bake a cake for her husband's birthday. She couldn't even be bothered to get a gift. What a thoughtless loser. Way to go, Chantal, proving every day that you're a narc. Well, not only that she's a narc, but she sucks as a wife. She's trying to paint this image of herself of I'm a wife. 
And I really take my responsibility seriously. And you like to cook all the time. Oh, really? So why not make a cake? Why not get some, get some cake mix and some eggs and some oil and some milk and make a box cake with some frosting? But no, can't do that. Can't do that, won't do that. For your handsomest man, the man you claim to love so much, can't even make a box cake. That is so pitiful. So pitiful. And, you, and you're not going to get him a gift either. You're not going to get him a gift. Nothing. And you claim to love your husband. You're not even going to get him a Hallmark card. Wow. It's all about you, isn't it? It's always about you. Autumn Ferry says this biatch really said, if I triggered you, I'm not responsible for your triggers. Excuse me. You are responsible for the clickbait pick and title you put up, making it appear you're being controlled and abused. You make me sick. It's never your fault. You don't deserve a channel. I hear you, Autumn Fairy. I do. But you know what? Since she said that, since she said, if I triggered you, I'm not responsible for your triggers. Oh, is that so? Hey, everybody on my channel. Hey, everybody in girl world. She said, if I triggered you, I'm not responsible for your triggers. Do you know what that means, girl world? That means we're not responsible for her triggers either. If we put out a video or we do a live where she gets triggered, it's, it's not our responsibility, right? I mean, let's level the playing field here. If we trigger her, it's not our responsibility. Mm -mm. If FFG makes her mad, it's not her responsibility. <laughs> if she gets mad over Sansa Cooks posting the macros, it's not her responsibility either. Right? I mean, we can all play this game. We can all put our chips on the numbers, not just foodie. But going back to your original point, Autumn Fairy, yes, she did know what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. And anymore, Foodie is all about the, the clickbait titles, the clickbait thumbnails, using the cheap tactics to get attention. It's not about quality content. It's not about something interesting that people can actually talk about. It's let me try to trick people to watch my content. My content is so bad anymore. I have to trick people into watching it so I can make money. That is how pathetic she is. That instead of making a quality live or a quality video that people can get into and reactors can talk about, she's got to do something deceptive to get people to watch. And she wonders why people don't watch anymore. Y'all know about that old story about the boy who cried wolf. Well, she's been clickbaiting the crap out of her thumbnails and her videos and her lives. And people are catching on. And the more they catch on, the less they're going to watch. So there's going to reach a point where the cheap, deceptive tactics don't work anymore. And once they stop working, what are you going to do, Chantal? Because you refuse to do quality content. You refuse to entertain the people. And they're the ones that pay your bills and pay for your food. Okay, Simone Resendez says, look at the pigsty. Housework, cleanup, where? Uh, Ihira, is that how you say that? By the way, Ihira is Arabic for biatch. Now, look at us learning Arabic in no time. So, hey, you learn something new every day. But she claims to do housework. Yeah, that's not looking like she's doing housework. I'm blowing that one up. That doesn't look clean to me. And there's no reason for that because what? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I'm just, I'm just looking to see what that is. 
Just everything stacked on that table. Why? Why? You're one person living alone, foodie. Your house should not look like that. Uh, Judge Judy says, foodie beauty is too fat for the treadmill scat man bought. <laughs> you know, listen, I don't think he ever bought a treadmill. I don't think there was ever a treadmill bought. And they both knew it. People are asking for the treadmill. And the story now is she was too big for it. There's no way that Salah would spend $1,000 or close to $1,000 on a treadmill knowing she's not going to use it. And then he's got to set it up in the apartment and blah, blah, blah. That was a lie. There was never a treadmill. He's not going to spend that money on, on a treadmill. No. Hello, YouTube says LMA, LMFAO. This is great. Screenshot this in chat. So Jam Rock says, Chantal, are you giving Salah a special kiss for his birthday, at least instead of talking to strangers online? You know, that husband you mentioned all day. My husband, my husband. Well, that's kind of a crude comment, but it actually has relevance here because it's his birthday. They're supposed to be a couple. They could spend the day with each other, just doing something privately, not online. You don't have to come online when it's your birthday. They could do something intimate or not intimate, but they could spend time together. But it's pretty telling when it's his birthday and there's this awkward energy between the two of you and he's putting off the energy if I really don't want to be here with you and there's nothing going on. It's, there's no romance. He doesn't look happy to spend his birthday with you. Again, I'm here for the suffering. I'm here for it. Uh, Kelly said, so foodie did nothing for her handsomest love of the 10th degree. No dinner, no gift, not even a cake since she'll eat it all. Such a wonderful wife he has. He can't even take a walk on the beach because something might happen to her. What a waste of a fake marriage. Yeah, they can't even fake marriage right. She's trying to put off this image of I love him so much, but yet she does nothing. And the energy's not there. And then she gets mad at us for saying it is a fake marriage. Although it's their fault. They're both bad actors. They're not even putting out the image very well. But this is so foodie. She's so selfish. Not making him dinner. Not baking him a cake. Not giving him a card. No gift. Nothing. Because it's always about her. You, She sucks. Okay, 4F Beauty and Lifestyle says, pretty shocking look on the model, but on Foodie, it's so much worse. You know, I, I actually like the look on the model. I mean, it looks, that looks well put together. She looks comfortable, very cool. Foodie, not so much. Not so much. And this is why when you go clothes shopping, you can look at the material, you can look at, what it looks like, but always take, take your body into account. Think about how you're shaped and, and your features and your skin tone, how it, if it'll pop up against the fabric or not, you got to think about yourself. If you shop online, uh, judge Judy says foodie beauty alone on Salah's birthday with a Beezer pretending to be him in her chat, no cake, no sweets, uh, you're not even buying something when you were in Thailand. Plus, you lied, Chantal. Muslims uh, do celebrate birthdays. They just don't go excessive. So, yeah, she's trying to say that Muslims don't celebrate birthdays, and they do. Uh, Witch of Machines says, face of a person who ate a slice of cake in four bites like a week ago. Yep. Yep. Uh, Truth Seekers says that's the lowest people in her life. Now, she had less than 300. 
and it's their fault. They weren't doing anything exciting. All right, Witch of Machine says, Foodie Beauty, you cannot beat your addiction by letting someone else help you control yourself. You must do the work. Facts. No husband should be put in this position. Salah, why do you allow this shame? Does your father find grocery and grub getter a position of worthy status? I don't know. I don't know what he's hanging around for. I suspect it's a combination of different things. The money, of course, but I think that she's got something on him and Foodie's very manipulative, especially when she wants to get her way. She'll find stuff out about you and threaten you with it if you try to leave. Something's got to give here. And this would be the perfect time to get rid of her because she's not bed bound yet. So if there are people around Salah, if there's any kind of talk going on of you guys are waiting for the perfect time to get rid of her, you need to do it now. Do you understand? You need to do it now while she's still on her feet. She is a human termite who eats food and constantly gains weight. You need to do something. Send her home. Because if she becomes bedbound, she's going to be more of a problem and a burden. Like y'all aren't even ready for that. Kuwait's not ready for that. Y'all need to send her home somehow before that happens. Because once she becomes bedbound, she's going to be th a thousand times worse headache. I'm telling you. Like, I don't, I don't know how long this is going to go on, but it makes no sense. It really makes no sense. Something's got to give. Someone needs to cut the cord. If the feeling is he's waiting for her to go home on her own, she's not going to go. She doesn't have a home to go home to. Why do you think she's hanging on so hard to you, Salah? It's not about being in love with you. It's about the fact that if she had to go home to Canada, she'd practically be homeless. When she left Canada, she gave up the villa and Pete's and the cats. There was no plan B. There was no turning back. She went all in with you. Therefore, she's going to hang on to you. So if you and your family and your friends, if I don't know what y'all are waiting on. If there's some kind of plan, y'all need to act on it and you need to act on it quick before she gains another 50 to 100 pounds. I'm not even joking. Y'all need to step it up. Get her out of there before she becomes bed bound. Um, Okie doll says, currently lying, claims she is losing weight, being active and in the 360s. No, she's not. That's a bunch of lies. Because if she were losing weight, y'all, the first place we would notice the weight loss would be her face. Her face would be getting a lot smaller. Like I remember back during the crackhead Olympic days when Foodie was losing weight due to the white powder she was shoving up her nose, you could see the weight loss in her face. You could see more of her cheekbones more of the ears, they weren't pressed up against her head. You could actually see it. I don't see it in her face. She's getting bigger. She's not getting smaller. Much bigger. I mean, whatever calories she's putting in herself, if she's laying around, she's not burning them off, even by just, just by walking. Uh, Biddy says, I think she's serious this time, you guys. We've never heard this from her before, ever. Let's listen. Back and asking me, like, how I come back, but uh, the cravings come back. But I have, like, this, like, rage inside of me for, like, I dare it to come back. <laughs> you know, like, I dare it to come back and ask me, like, ask me to eat pot pie, I swear. <laughs> Do it. Ask me. Craving. Go on cravings. Ask me to eat pot pie and see what happens to you. Well, okay. So, you, you, if you've conquered your cravings for pot pie what about the pizza 
What about the poutine? What about the French fries? Have you conquered all of your cravings, foodie? And tell me, what defense do you have when those cravings hit you at night? Because that's when they're the worst. She's a carb addict. And I can relate because I've been there. I've been there. They always come on the worst late at night. We're talking from like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. They get started by midnight. They're raging. So when you have those cravings, when you have those urges to eat late at night, when you're bored, when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're alone, what do you have to fight with? Absolutely nothing. So the pot pie cravings are, are a done deal, but what about all the other foods you eat? You're going to get the biggest F you know. <laughs> um, I, I'm not even, like the thought of that doesn't even appeal to me right now. Honestly, it doesn't. <clears throat> I've just been craving more natural food and I think, more natural food. Okay, so what about the eight different types of cheese that you bought? Eight. You're craving more natural foods. Why wasn't the grocery cart filled with produce? It was a snack run, foodie. You look, it takes one to know one. And your worst nightmare is somebody like me. Because you can't lie to one of your own. If you're still there, you can't lie to somebody who was once there. That was a snack run. All the foods you had in that cart, every single thing was a snack food. The olives, the bread, all that cheese, that was all your snack, B-moment foods. It wasn't stuff to put into complete meals to help fill you up. It was all stuff that you like to have B moments on. So if you're so on top of your problem, why'd you go to the grocery store and buy all that stuff? Because I know how it goes. If it's in the house, if it's in the fridge, if it's in the pantry, you're going to eat it. Guaranteed you're going to eat it. You're going to go for the things you like the most. And because they're there, you're going to overeat because it's so easy to get to them. You'll probably go through all of that stuff within, I would say, three or four days. All that cheese gone. And, and, and where's the bag with the junk food? You didn't show that on camera. And I know it's there. I know you're hiding it. Just like you hid the juice. That was also in your fridge. You didn't show us that part of your haul either. You know, the one that you busted on yourself and you showed off to the camera when you opened the fridge door and we saw the juice there. Yeah. Yeah, there's certain parts of your haul that you're not showing people. So where's the, where's the bag with the candy bars, foodie? Where are they at? Maybe you got two bags. You don't want to show people. Yeah. <laughs> You're on top of things, buying the candy bars, buying the cheese, the bread, the olives. You're on top of things. Sure. Go with that. I think I'm going to, when I do start mm. cooking again, I'm going to be like planning what, what kind of things. Like I think really high volume, like vegetable, like just a huge stock pot of soup that I love because I've been eating lentil and vegetable soup every day. So I'll just wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. Please stop. She's talking about making soups and stews. I didn't see very much in the way of supplies for soups and stews in that hall. I didn't. I saw some stew meat, true. I saw some noodles, also true. But I didn't see stuff to make like a soup stock. I didn't see any lentils. Where's that stuff at? I did not see stuff for complete meals a bunch of vegetables lentils and just blend it i love it um cheese sauce i found a hack for cheese sauces um i'm gonna just make like for one meal just like a huge thing of broccoli and like 
there's ways of like making like substitutes like you know how i love like creamy alfredo sauce kind of you can make like an alfredo sauce with like cauliflower you blend cauliflower um you add like silken tofu like there's different like alternatives so so dr foodie over here that knows about how to switch things out to make things more healthy she's basically trying to tell us look i know what to do I know how to make things healthy, so why don't you do it, Dr. Armchair, Dr. Blue Couch? Why aren't you doing it? Why haven't you been doing it? Why didn't you do it in Thailand? If you're so knowledgeable and you know how to do the switch out game with switching out bad things for good things, why were you in Thailand going wild with the food? having yourself an endless six week B moment that was never ending. Hmm. Tell me, I'm, I, I'm, I'm dying to know Dr. Armchair. That tastes amazing still and are super healthy. So I've just been like watching a lot of those videos of like people who have lost a lot of weight eating volume foods that are like very low calorie, but are very healthy, like mostly vegetables. So I'm trying to stay away from things that are really you know, really high fat, saturated fat, like creams and butters and stuff like that. So nothing processed. I watched her face when she said that last part. Notice that she was looking down. She tells on herself all the time, doesn't she? Oh my God. This woman tells on herself. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, she talks about like getting rid of cheese out of her diet. <laughs> She just, she, she, she's not a good liar. She tells on herself. Essentially, like, I'm not going to eat anything from a package. So. Really? Well, then I guess you're going to take all that cheese and throw it away, aren't you? Because that came in packages. That's all got to go to the dumpster right now, then. Yeah. Even like, if I go to a movie, cause there's a movie I really want to see. I'm not going to get, like, the photo drinking Diet Pepsi grosses me right out. It's like, just why drink? Yeah, this? like you're not going to get diet Pepsi. You're going to get full fat, full sugar Pepsi. It's a bunch of chemicals. What's the point? And the popcorn, okay, well, no. Okay, question, 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 foodie. So you're talking about the soda. What about the juice in your fridge? It's not exactly natural. It's sugar water. You're a diabetic. Does a diabetic need lots of sugar water, whether it's soda or juice? So why do you have it? And why do you have so much of it? Come on, Dr. Armchair. I, I, I want to hear an explanation. No, I don't even like popcorn and I'm not eating the nachos. There's no way. Who knows what's in that orange dye? Like, no. I could. Well, now she's concerned about dyes in her food. <laughs> God, how do her lips not catch fire with all the lies coming out of her mouth? I mean, we, we've all heard the saying, liar, liar, pants on fire. How do her lips not catch fire with all the lies that come out of her mouth? I could maybe try to make my own like nacho cheese, like with that sauce. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll probably just bring some pistachios or something. Who knows? Anyways, I guess that's it. Well, you're, you're, listen, you're talking like Salah is actually going to take you out to a movie. When it's his birthday and you didn't buy him a gift. You didn't make him a cake. You didn't even get a card. You were in Thailand for six weeks and you got absolutely nothing for your husband. You did nothing for him. You did nothing when you got back. And you're expecting him to take you out to the movies and treat you? Okay. Um, yeah, the fruits I've been eating, a lot of plums. I love plums, peaches. Shut up, foodie. You're boring. Okay. Uh, Fat Cow says, O-F-F-S, foodie. Birthdays are not forbidden in Islam. They are not celebrated by Jehovah's Witnesses. Forbidden, stop. Stop making stuff up to make yourself look less Colorful. So, like, I was wondering, do they celebrate birthdays in in uh, Kuwait? And they do. More than one person has said so that birthdays are celebrated. 
Maybe Salah just didn't want to get a cake knowing that Fodi would eat all of it. That she would basically just get food aggressive and claim the cake for herself and he wouldn't get very much of it. So he just said, you know what? She's already gained enough weight. I'm not getting a cake because I know what's going to happen if I get one. So he didn't bring a cake back and she got mad and she got salty because she did, couldn't eat all of the cake. So she decided to go online and talk. Maybe she thought that if she annoyed him enough that he would go out and get a cake. And he didn't. <laughs> no cake for him and no cake for you either. Uh, Lauren Dahl says, there's a video of Foodie Beauty before Kuwait. She's lying on her dirty bed in the villa and holding that white stuffed animal, the llama. And she said, I don't want to do anything. I don't want any responsibilities. I just want someone to tell me what to do every day. Now she's complaining, right? Like you can't make her happy. You give her what she wants and she's unhappy with it. There's no making that woman happy. Mrs. Flupa Booty says can't get a cake for her husband's birthday because she has zero self-control and would eat the whole thing in less than seven minutes. Yep, sure would. I mean, she was in Thailand. She had a huge quarter of a cake slice and she ate that in four bites. She unhinged her jaw to eat that cake. Uh, Witch of Machine says, giggling that Foodie Beauty's chat is asking over and over what she's doing for Salah's birthday. And she's answering over and over, nothing. Yeah, because she's being spiteful. He's not going to get me my food. He's not going to get my takeout for me. He's not even going to get a cake. I'm just going to sit here and annoy him. What a wonderful relationship they have. Okay, so narcissism my way. Okay, let me just oh, I'm going to come back to that at a later date. Let's see. Is there any is there any uh African American people? Say okay, so okay, this this has to do with there have been some comments in Foodie's chat, racist comments and that Chantal has allowed. They've been made by her mods. So narcissism my way posted this old clip of Foodie Back from 2020, the night Foodie Beauty awoke from an evening nap with three-day-old eyeliners smeared across her face to record her impromptu 2020 villa talk on racism. I'm big mad. Let's watch. Hi, guys. So this video is going to be, it's going to consist of me using my platform to speak up. I honestly don't have anything really prepared to say if you haven't guessed already i'm talking about racism people relax with the racism bs exactly against people of color now stupid monty is calling me racist you're really gonna pull the race card really i've been posting my support to try to show my support how do you say black what do you what do you okay African-American people, how, what do we call you? Like people have said, well, it might not be enough. And I was offended at first. I thought support shaming, you know? Oh, we got to turn the music off. Okay. Back to foodie. The two X dresses too. Oh, sorry. Okay. I love you, but yeah. God, I need like fucking space. White supremacy should not exist. Should have never existed. It should not exist today. You know, Chantal, you have been very racist with the things that you have said. You have been. You've been very hateful that way. And then your mods are hateful and you don't take their wrenches away. You're just a very hateful person. So you want to have a little talk in 2020 about racism at the same time since then and is now 2024, you still continue to say racist things 
and you let people in your chat say racist things. And you continue to use the R word. And being insensitive about that. Offending a lot of people, hurting a lot of people. You're not educating yourself. You just continue to do this awful, offensive, racist talk and behavior. The way it does. Prince says, e, with all fairness, I don't think I'm the one who needs to relax here. I don't think I'm the one who needs to relax. I would always hear African-American people say, complain about the cops and, you know, fuck the police. He said, you said he should get beat up by the cops. How is that racist? How is that racist? Again, can't take um, a fucking joke. Because violence against black men is a serious problem in the US. The whole law enforcement system needs an overhaul. And then whenever I said, the cops should beat you up for being stupid like that, for reporting stupid shit like that. That's racist, really? Just because he's black and I'm referencing cop and black in the same sentence? No, that's fucking reaching. So I'm just doing what I can for now, sharing my voice on my platform. Fucking shit. So you can, you can literally cry microaggressions for everything, apparently. Like, really? For all those who have lost their lives. <sighs> I, I got no words for her right now. I'm just so mad right now. I'm going to keep my mouth shut and just continue on. Uh, Fat Cow says, watching last night's live and paused immediately after Foodie Beauty said she wasn't going to eat Salah's cake anyway because it would have had too much sugar. And this was the expression I paused on, had to share. <laughs> Great pause game, Fat Cow. Great pause game. All right, everybody lean in. Remember the last react I did where there kind of was a, a T comment? Looks like we got another one. Kelly says, this comment was left on my YouTube channel. I don't know if they're just trolling, but thought I would share. What are your thoughts? Okay, so let's read. Bless, she must be new. If she has no use for you guys now that she's back with Salah because she's a user. She uses everyone and everything. The standard was set when she literally abandoned her, the one true best friend she had at his darkest moment for a chance at sex with the Nads. If you want to see how she's going to treat the people she claims to love, look no further than Pete's. She uses and takes till there's nothing left to take, then she dips. Also, as someone who is still friends with most of the Kuwait boys, here comes the tea, friends of almost a decade now, and we will remain a good friends and no one will come in between us, not Chantal and not Salah, and very much still close with the family I was supposed to marry into. I can confirm we have all heard about the absolute hellish temper tantrums over food and attention, her abhorrent hygiene habits, and childish juvenile behavior. I don't care how much Salah pretends to like it. He doesn't. Salah's family does not approve and can't stand her. Despite the family's golden child, Salah, attempt at making her more palatable, I talk to many of my friends over there regularly and get updates on the regular. It's literally same stuff, different place. They see right through her and everyone is just buying time till it's time. Oh, oh, what that means, I don't know. I've asked several times and they refuse to tell me. As for it being a whole affair, I don't know about that. I was under the impression they were just knocking boots, but I could be wrong and feelings could be involved. But several of us, seven, uh, were in Kuwait while she was in Thailand. I don't know. That's all I can say for now. I don't want to steal anyone's thunder. But eventually it will make its way to the surface. Patience, graph hoppers. Look, I'm taking this with a grain of salt. I'm part of girl world. I've been part of girl world for years. Receipts. I want receipts. Girl world, we want, we want receipts. Anybody could say anything. But until we get absolute palatable proof, it's just words. But on the chance 
This person is being truthful. I'm just going to say it again. Look, whoever you are, whoever these people are, that they're just buying time until it's time. It's time. Foodie is so close to being bed bound. Y'all don't want to wait over there until she becomes bed bound. If there's a way to send her home before that happens, y'all need to act on it. Don't wait until she's laid up and she can't move. Do something. I'm not saying cause any bodily harm to her, but if there's a way through paperwork or whatever to get her out of there, y'all need to work on this. Y'all need to make it happen. I don't know about this buying time till it's time thing. It's like, when is it, when is it not time? The time is now. Make it happen now. Good God. Don't wait until she's on the couch and can't get up. Okay. This is from Fat Cal. Uh, this is an open letter from Fat Cal to Foodie Beauty. Fat Cal says, Dear Foodie Beauty, stop. Stop this pantomime, this charade, this foolishness. You are not in an intimate and romantic relationship with Salah. You agreed to move to the Middle East and marry Salah on day two of talking with him. He himself had been overheard saying he was surprised at how quickly you agreed to it. At best, this was a desperate attempt to appear to be wanted, desired, and owned by a younger man. At worst, this was your attempt to get one over on Natter. I've said that. Didn't I say that? That she was doing this as a get back to Natter? Either way, it's pitiful and pathetic. Salah isn't the love of your life, nor your soulmate. He barely is even your friend. Your business partners join together in some sad arrangement where you provide him a better life of life and money. And he barely, by the way, gives your audience the illusion of a marriage. I've been told that he controls the amount of time you spend on live by dangling the promise of food as a reward if you manage more than three hours. I've heard that he uses food as leverage for a lot of things, such as chores. This current healthy eating arc, none of this is your idea, and you're only playing it off as being yours to save face. Salah has decided not to help you order fast food, and Salah has decided he'll no longer take you out to eat. Salah doesn't even want to spend time with you anymore. Salah doesn't love you. He barely likes you. He didn't want to spend his birthday with you, which, by the way, is not forbidden in Islam. It's Jehovah Witnesses that don't celebrate that. Islam doesn't celebrate holidays that belong to other faiths, such as Christmas birthdays are not religious. He celebrated it with people he actually cares about. You are not nearly as clever nor nearly as good at lying as you think you are. You are not fooling anyone. Okay, maybe some people, but they are seriously the minority. Would it kill you to be honest just once in your life? Or do you prefer unaliving yourself, denying the truth? Yours, almost everybody. Really well said, Fat Cal. Really well said. She's not fooling anybody. Okay, Fat Cow goes on to say, Foodie Beauty can't order fast food or get groceries by herself. And Salah is refusing to do it for her, more than likely because of money, not concerned for her health. She's framing this as healthy eating arc as her idea to save face and to explain the lack of fast food mukbangs. Yep, it's narcissist. In every story, they have to be the hero or the victim, or both simultaneously at the same time. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass says, Poop Dude really didn't want any birthday treats because he knew she'd eat them all. He'd already posted she gobbled up all his ice cream treats. What would be the point? <laughs> yeah, he's not going to go all in and get a cake knowing she's going to claim that for herself too. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass says, I'm not responsible for your triggers. Really? Because you're the first person to blame everyone else when you rage. Make poor choices and act like a rotten human being. Why aren't you working on yourself, Chantal? Well, because working on herself is something that she just doesn't do.
Let's see. Uh, Florida Salton Sass says, so much for the home gym, like we didn't know. She really thinks we're as dumb as the men she chases and as easily bullied and gaslit as her family is. I'd say nice try, Chins, but you really don't try at all. Uh, Florida Salton Sass also goes on to say, it's amazing how much she even gaslights herself. She spun this alternate reality in her head that they're the it couple that's made it in life. It's obvious he doesn't care. They rent an apartment. They have a fake marriage. She can't even stay in the country indefinitely, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, that's that's all the Twitter catch up. I spent the morning just catching up on Twitter. So. Let's see, let's where, where are we going next? You know what? We're we're like an an hour already. Well, when we do some do some of the highlights from Marley Hendricks, and I'll leave the link down below for Marley, uh, so you guys can get the highlights of all this stuff. All right, really well done video from Marley Hendricks. Okay, so here we are. Okay, perfect. All right, so this video from Marley Hendricks is called Foodie Beauty Denied Salah a Birthday Cake Because She Couldn't Eat Any. Oh, poor Chantal. No cake for you, even though it's not your doggone birthday. <laughs> so all of you that are part of my channel, all of you watching this video, y'all ready for the awkwardness? the silence, the awkward energy between this, this supposed married couple. Cause again, I'm here for it. I mean, this is my dessert. Let's, let's do this. Hello. Yeah. Diet is going well. Tommy, we so. No, we don't celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving. No ordering out. Don't yell. Don't tell it. Don't yell at Salah. I wouldn't yell at him. Uh, Let me slow this down just a little bit. Okay. There we go. So here's the thing. Salah doesn't celebrate birthdays. Like he's really just not in really into it. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. I don't know if you guys have seen this clip, but it's, it's floating around somewhere. But I saw a clip someplace where Salah was with his male friends. This was when he was younger, but he was having a good time. I don't know if it was a birthday or some kind of party, but he was, he was tearing it up. So I watched that video. He was having a good time, smiling from ear to ear, comfortable. He likes to celebrate occasions, Chantal. You're just trying to spin it like he doesn't like to celebrate things when he does. He just doesn't want to celebrate anything around you because you're not fun. I'm sure he does plenty of celebrating around his real friends and family. He feels happy when he's around people that make him happy. You don't make him happy. So therefore, he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want anything to do with you. Um... Yeah, he just I, I remember him always saying that. Like I, I make a bigger deal out of it than him, but um so we did, he didn't want to get a cake. I wanted to get a cake for him, but so he didn't want to get a cake. Cuz he knew that she would eat it all. If he was watching her in Thailand and he saw her shove that cake in her face in four bites, he's not going to buy an entire cake knowing that she's going to get food aggressive and claim the whole doggone thing. She might let him have one little skinny slice of cake on camera, but then as soon as the camera is turned off, she's going to claim the whole thing and tell him to leave it there at the apartment. I don't blame him. It's his birthday. And if he got birthday cake, it would be his cake. But Chantal's such a narcissist that it's his birthday and she's making it about her. She did a live stream where he was barely shown and she had her big old face in the camera talking to people. 
they're supposed to be a married couple. If it's your husband or your wife's birthday, generally you spend time with your husband or your wife privately doing something special with them. You don't turn on a live stream and put your face in the camera and start talking to strangers. You give the time and the focus and the energy to the person who is your spouse. See, her doing things like this proves they are not in a relationship. He's like, it might actually be like too tempting for you. I don't want to like get a big cake just for myself. Um, so, cause I wasn't going to have any of it anyway. You know, there's always a workaround with the bir birthday cake situation. If he wanted to get something cake, like he could have found a bakery and found like some healthier cupcakes, you know, something smaller to where there's not a mass of cake, like some healthy, maybe some gluten-free or something cupcakes or mini cupcakes. I mean, there's always an alternative. He just didn't want to bring her a bunch of sweets and then have her get on camera and go to town eating that stuff. Thanks. So it's like pure sugar. So, um, no. If you're supposed to be on a health journey, Chantal, and it's his birthday, what you could do is let the man have his cake and not eaten any of it find something else to eat or eat before the cake shows up to where you're not hungry it's his birthday not yours let the man have his cake no cake no presents no celebrations just uh and she's so selfish that her point of view is well if i can't have any cake then you can't have any cake i don't care if it is your birthday if I'm not getting any cake, then nobody is. She's such a brat. Yeah, nothing. Nothing for, for poor King Beezer here. Okay, Marley says, I get the no cake thing, but why no presents? What do they have to do with your diet? Nothing. Nothing. It, it, Chantal is such an incredible narc. Everything's got to be about her. She's that person that even though it's somebody else's birthday... She expects a cake for herself. She expects presents for herself. She expects to be treated to dinner. She wants a special treatment, even though it's not her day. She's not going to give Salah a present. She's not going to bake him a cake or take him anywhere or pay for something. Nope. Nope. It's got to be about her. No, he didn't want to go out to dinner. He didn't want to do anything. So, you know, I'm reading her expression. He's like, no, he didn't want to go to dinner. She's annoyed. She's annoyed. She thought he would spend his birthday taking her out and treating her. Maybe she thought that he would take her to dinner and buy her a bunch of food. And then take her to a movie and get more food there. Like maybe she was counting on doing things where food was involved. And Salah said, no. And she's mad. Ooh, I'm looking those eyes. She's mad. He doesn't want to make a big deal. He doesn't even, he hasn't had dinner yet. I made him his favorite, favorite huge breakfast. And that's kept him full up until now. So, hey, babe. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm going to do like an update video at some point, like with a weigh-in. And I'm going to have Salah like film the weigh-in. But I weighed myself today anyways. I didn't film it because like I was going to get him to do it and just didn't happen. So I just, I just want to know like for myself, but I'll probably do it tomorrow. Film it maybe tomorrow. So yeah, I'm actually... Um... To, for the record, I don't think the scale that Foodie has, that it can go up all the way to cover her current weight. I think the scale that she has, doesn't it, it doesn't go up to 600 pounds. I think she's about 550, but the scale that she's always showing us does not go up that high. And she messes around with it anyway. So I don't trust whatever reading she gets off it. I'm actually down. Like, I, well, 
I don't know what the accurate reading on the street scale would have been, but I think when we did the street scale, I was. And Molly just flashed something on the screen saying, notice how irritated she is without food. That's because she's gotten her ritual. She's got rituals around food. Like she sits down for a live stream and she associates that with, I have to eat at the same time. <clears throat> she doesn't know how to sit down and do a live without putting something in her face, sipping on something, eating something, shoving something in there. She's got really bad habits, really bad conditioning that needs to be broken down, like associating different things with food and tying food in with that. So she's sitting down with her, this live stream and she doesn't know what to do with herself. She's irritated because she can't use eating food as a way to run up the meter. That by eating, she can just waste time. She's got to actually talk to people. It's in the 360s, <laughs> maybe even higher. I don't know, but I'm. Ma'am, no, you are not 350 pounds. You're not even 360. I was there during the BB days. I saw how you looked. I saw how you moved. You don't look like that anymore. And it's not because it's been a few years. Your face is so much bigger than what it used to be. You've gained a lot of weight. And the scary thing is knowing we're looking at you with the filters on. What would it look like with the filters off? But even with the filters on, we can tell you haven't lost weight. Because if you lost weight, we could see it in your face. We'd see more of the cheekbones. They start poking out a bit more. You know, like you could just tell you've lost weight. It shows up there too. You keep gaining weight. You, your face is getting bigger. Your features are starting to change. You're not losing, you're gaining. 354. Not 350. I, look. You're a liar. Everybody knows the rule. Chantal lies. And because there's that rule, we don't believe you. You have to show us tangible proof. Go to a hospital, get on a medical scale. Have Salah film you from far away so we can see that your feet are on this scale. And there's absolutely no way you can lie to us. A medical scale that can take 600 pounds. I'll believe that reading before. So it was 160 in the 160s and 154 kilos. Now the day before travel day, like the day before travel day, I didn't eat. And then since then I've just been on track. So it's been a little bit and I did a lot of exercise, you know, so that's helped a bit anyways. That's a lie because when she was in Thailand, she kept complaining about how sick she was and I'm sick to my stomach and I don't have any energy. When did she exercise? She walked. But she didn't walk that far. She got in the elevator. She came down the elevator. She would pick up her food and then go right back up to her room. She barely walked. And Chantal, I used to have an exercise bike. I called George. Me and George used to have a love-hate relationship. I, I love the feeling after I was done cycling, but doggone it, I hated George because that doggone bicycle seat that was a spawn of Satan... <laughs> It hurt my butt, but I would sit there and put YouTube on and write on George and I would sit there and do the bike and it would take me an hour riding hard and, and switching up the different levels to burn a thousand calories, 2000 calories. And you eat like six, 7,000 in a day. So don't talk to me about I'm losing weight, liar. So, you know. And to burn all those calories by the end of my sessions with the bike, I'm covered in sweat. I need a shower. So she's not even breaking a sweat. She's not even raising her heart rate. There's no way she's burning calories. No. 
have slug it on the scale before so we know it's accurate that's i could do that totally buster in the video i definitely will he's not in charge of anything so basically what for like <laughs> i use the term control loosely like you know mostly just like basically i just show him everything i eat like I okay so Here's Marley saying she clickbaited everyone into thinking Salah was imposing on Chantal. So um, look at this thumbnail. There could be several things going on here. One, she could be letting him know subtly. If you tick me off, this is the direction that I could go in with you. So you better give me what I want or I'm going to paint the worst picture of you, the darkest picture that you're controlling and, and this whole thing is abusive. We can go in this direction. You can go from being handsomest man and I love you so much and you're so supportive to being an abusive POS because that's what she did with Natter. So why wouldn't she do it with Salah? But yeah, clickbaity titles. And she chose that expression. I let him control me. And she's looking kind of frightened. And this is the part of my react where I, I'm, I don't even care about YouTube anymore. You know, this is what I have to say to YouTube. You and your rules, it make no sense. You turning your head and letting certain people have channels when they have no business having channels because we're doing self-harm content, YouTube. You'll let those people have channels, but then you'll slap all the reaction channels for doing their reactions. You're, you're, you're using DV one more time to make money, Chantal, as if you've not used it enough. You want sympathy for allegedly being a DV victim. At the same time, you're making a mockery of DV. This crap right here is a slap in the face to those of us that have been through DV for real. Like you're monetizing DV. You're suggesting it. You fucking bitch. How pathetic are you that you have a channel and you can make quality content and you could entertain people? You know how to do it. You know what needs to be done. But not only are you relying on clickbait, massive amounts of clickbait to make you money anymore. You're making a mockery of DV and those of us that are victims and those of us that were once victims and now we're survivors. I'm just going to say this, Chantal. I think you're a fake phony victim. I've always felt that way. For half a minute, you did fool me. You did. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll confess you did. I, I, I thought for a minute that was it real. But then the longer that it, things went on, the more I started noticing things. It didn't make any sense. And it became apparent to me and others, you were lying. That you weren't speaking on real life experiences. You were just making up stories. You're a bland boring person who tries to put on layers of other things to make yourself seem relatable or interesting or make it appear like you've been through some things in life. Bitch, you haven't been through shit. I can tell by looking into your dead eyes. You ain't been through nothing. You haven't survived anything. You haven't walked through the fire. No, you haven't. 
Because when you walk through the fire, it makes you stronger. You walk through the fire, you get a spine of titanium. You don't have that, Miss Liatica. You don't have a steel spine. You don't have strength in your soul. But you try to act like you do. At the same time, you put off this image of, I'm weak and I'm helpless. Someone needs to help me. Stop using things like DV and SA to get views. You pathetic worm of a woman. If you'd really been through DV, you would have more respect for those who are real victims. And you wouldn't want to trigger them. You wouldn't want to upset them or remind them of anything they've been through. You just wouldn't. But this, this thumbnail was bullshit. Absolute bullshit. You knew what you were doing making this thumbnail. You you did it on purpose to get the reaction channels to talk. You're all about, I've got to create some outrage. Versus doing what's good for you and taking care of your health. Going back home to Canada and checking into inpatient. This is so disgusting. I can't even. But let's go on with the video from Marley Hendricks. I'm in charge of meal planning. I'm in charge of like, you know, planning my meals. And I just show him, basically. So I did some food prep today. Prepped some salad. And I... Uh, uh, you don't really need to prep a salad. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a salad. Salads are not that complicated. Um, some pita in the air fryer for some fatouche. <clears throat> yeah, I saw a couple comments about it. Like, it's DV. Or okay, so you led people to believe Salah was controlling. You knew what you did. Yeah. She knew exactly what she was doing. She was mad at him, maybe because she, he wasn't buying her takeout. And so she's going to kind of get back at him by trying to paint this picture of, oh, he's controlling me. He's being abusive. That was her slightly threatening him. Like, this is a direction that I could go in with my content and have my Beezer hive all over you. With a snap of my fingers, I can have them all against you. So give me what I want. She's very evil and manipulative that way. It's like, it's not, DV. how is it DV if I don't like? Shut up, Chantal. I can tell by the look in your eyes. You, you, you know what you did. You know what you did. It was clickbait. You wanted some extra views. You know what you did. You're acting like, oh my God, I don't know why you thought that. You do know. You do know. And you did it on purpose because you were mad at him. And you wanted attention and views. I don't, I'm, I don't feel abused, you know, I'm not being abused or anything. Then you shouldn't have made a thumbnail suggesting that you were being controlled and abused, you bitch. You should have taken that thumbnail down. If people are contacting you and they're saying, this is what it looks like. If you didn't mean it, if it was an accident, then your response should have been, oh my God, like you're right. Now I'm looking at it a second time and it does look like that. And I'm so sorry. Nope, you're doubling down. You're doubling down. Of course you will. I think I'm just, you know. There's different types of control in life. Not all of them. Are. It's not domestic violence. I think. Yeah, but you posted the picture with his hand around your throat. You have tons of pictures of Salah. Why pick that one? Seriously, why? You picked that one on purpose.
You are a see you next Tuesday. I think that mislabeling it is really horrible for people to do. Oh, and there we go again. She's got tons of pictures of Slaw. Uh, this was her thumbnail. She knew how this looked. She knew how this looked. So we got the hand around the throat and we got this scared expression. Yeah. Yeah. It, why wouldn't somebody think the worst? You know, as for people getting triggered by my content, I'm not responsible for your triggers. So there we go. Same here, Chantal. Clip and reaction channels are not responsible for your triggers. Exactly. If we make you rage, if we say something to tick you off on Twitter or YouTube or the lives or the community pages, we're not responsible for making you mad. Just as Salah is not responsible for your B moments. Because your addiction is your responsibility. It's for you to deal with or not deal with. You can't use another person to act as the control for your addiction. That's not recovery. That's treating somebody like a living crutch. And that gets old after a while. It's, it's exhausting. He's not the control for you. And I know you're trying to set him up, up, him up in that position. But what you're doing is manipulative. Y'all, y'all lean in and listen for this, to this for a minute. My thoughts. I think Chantal is manipulative even with her food addiction. Very manipulative. She's very clingy. She's very needy. But she even uses her addiction as a manipulation tactic to get Salah to spend more time with her. That if he leaves her alone too long or if he's not picking up the phone... She'll have herself a little B moment and then he comes over and she says, look what you made me do. See, it's your fault. You weren't here to watch over me. Look what you made me do. It's your fault it happened. No, Chantal, it's your fault. You're an adult. He's an adult. He's actually younger than you. It's your responsibility to police yourself. But you are such a manipulative bitch that you even use your own addiction to try to control him and get more time with him. And let me tell you something, big mama. All you're doing is breeding more anger and resentment and hatred and rage beneath the surface. He may be quiet. He may not be letting that rage out, but he feels it. And you got to be careful with those quiet people. They will surprise you. I'm not saying he'll physically hurt you, but when we explode, we explode. And you'll never see it coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because you got somebody around you that's, for the most part, quiet, doesn't mean they don't feel anything. Doesn't mean they're not thinking anything. It just means at that moment, they're not speaking on it. But at some point, if you push that red button, they will. But if you get triggered, Chantal, girl world, we're not responsible. You hear that? Girl world, we are not responsible. If we make her mad, if Frenchie makes her mad, not responsible. We're not responsible for her triggers. Well, that's something you should work on yourself. I didn't bake anything. No. So I didn't want anything. So he just wants to be supportive and not like tempt me with sweets and stuff like that. Like, you know? Yeah. Like if I can't have it, neither can you Salah. That's pretty much the way she operates. Whatever you have, I have to have too. If you're having cake, then I've got to have cake. 
So you know what Salah said? Well, then no cake. He probably already celebrated his birthday with his real friends and relatives. So he don't care that Chantal doesn't have cake. She's not in the close circle. So, because I was like looking through the, diff I was looking through like the cakes and stuff, what to get him. And I was like, I swear. Stop right there. That was important. So I was looking through the cakes of what to get Salah. But was he there? Was Salah there looking at the cakes with you? Because it's his birthday, not yours. So why are you looking at cakes by yourself? Hmm? Hmm? You weren't looking at a cake for him. You were looking at a cake that you would like to eat. You were planning on getting one. But aren't you on a heart health arc? Don't you have diabetes? Wouldn't cake be bad for you? So why are you looking at cakes? I mean, you could have a birthday and, and get other things that are not sweets. You, you can get creative. You can just omit the cake or buy something that's diabetic friendly or just not have food at all. Just get the presents, go somewhere, walk on the beach. There's all kinds of things you can do for a birthday. But look at her saying, I was looking for a cake. Oh, I bet you were. Miss eat a cake in three bites. I'm sure you were. You're probably going to treat that birthday cake like Pac-Man treats a power pellet. Some of the stuff looks so good. Like kanafa cheesecake and pistachio cheesecake. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> Poor Salah. <laughs> yeah. She was probably planning on him getting two cakes, one for him and one for her. You know, because one just isn't enough for Chantal. She wants variety. He had his hand around my, my, this area in a loving manner, not in a bad way. Yeah, but then you put that along with the picture next to it of you looking scared. Shut the fuck up, Chantal. You knew what you were doing. You did it on purpose. You want the reaction channels to talk about you. You know what? We would talk about you if you made interesting lives and videos anymore, but you're determined to be a boring bitch. <clears throat> I haven't really been thinking about the war, Suzmir, honestly, but it's horrible. Things are getting crazy. You know and yes, I don't even care about monetizing this video because I'm just going to let it out. Like she annoys me with this mocking DV thing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that she's so pathetic. That she's going to just act like he's hurting her, controlling her to get attention. It's disgusting to me. I fucking hate it. And yeah, I'm just going to go off on her today. Spicy Rose is out. I know y'all like her. I'm letting her out today. I'm letting her out. That's just how it is. Like she's got me all the way annoyed with this crap. He doesn't celebrate Nudo Squishy. Will he sing him a birthday song? Yeah, maybe later he can play his birthday song, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something to be concerned about, I guess, you know, but because I gave up sweets in my birthday session, I will not crave them. It's okay. My wife's health is my priority. Said, yeah. And he kept saying, you're my gift. You're my gift. When I woke up today. <laughs> Chantal out here making Salah's birthday about her. Yeah. What a loving relationship. It's his birthday and you jump online like it's your birthday and you were expecting people to send super chats and memberships. It's not your freaking birthday. It is not your day. What he should have been doing is jumping on his gaming channel alone and celebrating it that way. Why be on your channel? That makes no sense. <laughs> I said, what do you want for your gift? I should have just maybe surprised him, but like we do everything together. It's hard to like surprise him. You know, like he, I need him to drive me to the store to buy him a gift. You know? <laughs> Ma'am, you were just at the store and you just ordered Timu crap. You definitely could have at least bought something online at least. Right. She just did the Timu shopping. She couldn't buy something off of Timu. There's stuff for men on Timu. She could have bought him some new clothes. So he's not wearing that super dry shirt all the time. 
Maybe she could have bought him a little stuffed toy that went woof, 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 woof. Happy birthday on the keyboard for him. Yeah, I can try. A new gaming chair. True, maybe. Yeah, what's the point of buying the new gaming chair if she's going to sit at it and break it again? That gaming chair is, it's, it's toast. She's already broken the hydraulics because she's way over the weight limit. That chair is... The weight limit is 400 pounds. She's well over five. The hydraulics are broken to the point where she can't lift the chair up. The arm is broken. She's That chair is busted. <clears throat> it's literally once a year. But not everyone celebrates birthdays. Like Muslims typically don't celebrate their birthday. I figure the biggest gift I can give them. Okay, so here's, the, here's, here's Chantal's birthday. Myself is doing trying to and this is courtesy of chicken pickle do better on my birthday why not although are we going out for dinner tomorrow i don't remember Inshallah. I'm for my, this is arabic style happy birthday and when you think about the way she celebrated her birthday in canada if she were in canada and not kuwait with salah like she, for her birthday she liked to get high on the green she liked to eat a bunch of food she associates any holiday with food. It's got to have food in it because he's playing happy birthday. But th does, does this look awkward or what? The two of them, don't they look awkward? It looks so awkward. Like they both look so out of place. Like they could be anywhere else but where they are. She's trying to act interested, but she's really not. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at it. I, like, you wanted this, Chantal. You paid for it. This is what you wanted. This is what you paid nine grand for, girl. You don't, you don't like your gift? Okay, I'm, I want to get past... This right here. <laughs> Happy birthday, baby. Look at the way he touches her, like hands to the back of the neck and kissing her forehead. Not even kissing her cheek. Kissing her forehead. He, he doesn't want to get anywhere near her mouth. I want to cry because honestly, you're like the Chantal. Think about this for a minute. You paid nine thousand dollars for a guy that doesn't touch you, and he kisses your forehead. Nine grand to have somebody kiss your forehead. <laughs> the biggest birthday gift ever. Thank you, baby. That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh my god! Like nine thousand dollars to have somebody kiss your forehead and play the keyboard badly. I love you. <laughs> I love you more. Oh, that was so sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're so handsome. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's ever sung, sang to me like that. So. No gifts, nothing. No more mukbangs. Um, if I do mukbangs, like I'll do like food content, like in regards to like, you know, maybe just like if I have something I want to talk about and I want to eat dinner, like a health. Okay, so let's talk about the mukbang situation. That is such a great moment right there. I love that face. Hold on. Pause game. I like that face. Do you guys like that face? That's a great face. That is such a great face. We have to stop. Just stop for a minute. I got to get that face. I like that face. That is such a great Halloween face. Shoot. Okay. Moving on. So, yeah, let's talk about the mukbang thing. What are her mukbangs? Her eating massive amounts of food. Usually fast food. She's got feedies in her back pocket. They pay her to eat massive amounts of food. They pay her for the food to eat it, plus they pay for the food. They, 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 they Basically, she gets free meals. 
So if that is the bulk of her income, and I believe it is, which means it's also the bulk of Salah's income because he gets paid from Chantal, how can he deny her her doing her mukbangs? There's no way to step away from it. She's depending on that feeding money to pay the bills and pay the rent. He's depending on her for whatever it is he gets. Like she made a toxic addiction machine that's been running for years. And she doesn't want to break it down and she doesn't want to destroy it. She just keeps it running because as long as it's running, she can make a little bit of a living. But she's not going to do the healthy mukbangs. That's not what the feedies are paying her for. Enemy Sucks is not paying her to eat healthy food. He was absolutely horrified when she talked about working out. He said, don't do that. There's no feedie out there that's going to pay someone like Chantal to eat healthy food and get healthy. Healthy dinner with you guys that I made. You know, stuff like that. But I'm not like... I'm trying to eat healthier food, like real food, but I'm mostly just like, that's what I'm doing right now and focusing on not binge eating. Um, so yeah, let's see. No, it doesn't matter if it's binge eating or overeating. Either or you're eating too much. It's calories in, calories out. It doesn't matter if you have a B moment or if you're just overeating several times a day. You're consuming too many calories, and if there's not an activity level to burn the majority of them off, you're going to gain weight. It don't matter if you're eating 8,000 calories in broccoli or poutine. It's still 8,000 calories. You're still going to gain weight, girl. You're very sedentary, Chantal. You don't move. You seal. You're not burning off the doggone calories. And you being sedentary, you don't need much in the way of calories just for basic function. So anything over that amount of calories of basic function, it's, it's going to be turned into fat. So you might want to slow down with the calories. You don't need as much as you think. And you're five feet tall. And you're as wide around as you are tall. You're looking like an entire schoolroom globe. Girl, stop. Another 50 to 100 pounds, you will be bed bound. Do you understand that? And gaining 50 pounds for you is extremely easy. If you're eating easily six to nine to 10,000 calories a day, it takes 3,500 calories to make one pound of fat. And if you're putting away, you're clocking in at like seven to 8,000 calories, you're literally gaining one to two pounds a day every day. Do the math, Chantal. That means on the low side, you're gaining 30 pounds a month. And let's just say you stayed on the low side. 30 pounds a month times three months is what? It's 90 pounds. On the high side, you might be uh, gaining more weight per day, which would make it over 30. But you could easily put another 50 pounds on within a month or two. And then two months after that, be close to 100. You're so close to bed bound, it's scary. Slow the fuck down with the food. Seriously, your body can't take much more. If you care, do it. If don't, if, you're, if you don't care, keep going. Keep going and see what don't happen. Fuck around and find out. Basically what I'm doing. No, I didn't cook anything. No gifts. <laughs> <laughs> go, we, go dancing. There's no dancing gloves here. No. Oh, yes, there is. I'm sure there are little places that you don't know about. You're never going to know about because... Uh, not your business. I'm sure there are places that Salah and his friends go that you aren't aware of. That he's got another phone and he leaves his phone at his place, the one with the tracker, 
takes his other phone with him and he goes out to the red room or some other room where there are dancing girls and people. And he's out having, he's got an active nightlife, I'm sure, away from you. He needs those moments away just to deal with you. He doesn't respect this. He doesn't uh, celebrate his birthday. But just not. He, yes, he does. He just didn't celebrate it with you. He's not going to celebrate it with you. It's like actually like supposed to be forbidden in Islam. I see if you look at the hadiths and. You know. No, it's not. Several people have said you can celebrate your birthday in Kuwait as a Muslim. You just can't be excessive. Everything. I don't even think I honestly don't really care about my birthday anymore either. Like, I don't know. You would care about it if you were in Canada and you, it was your birthday and you were in Canada, you'd be celebrating your birthday. Don't tell me you don't care. You find any excuse to do the green and eat the food. I don't think I'll celebrate this year. Really? Honestly, I don't really care either. I don't want to get older. So there's nothing. Ah, so now she's 40 years old and she's like, I don't want to get older. Therefore, I'm not going to celebrate my birthday. It doesn't mean you're not getting older. So the not celebrating her birthday, that is the new 350 pounds on the scale. Like she's got some kind of weirdness going on in her brain that I guess she feels that if she keeps her weight mentally in the 300s that she's not obese but anything over 350 pounds 360 is obese like she's got some weird boundaries and lines there so now we've got another one where she's hit the big 4-0 and she's like i don't want to get older so i'm just going to stay 40 forever okay need to celebrate <laughs> His favorite dinner. I made him his favorite breakfast. And for the record, Chantal, I'm 53. I know that probably horrifies you. Oh my God. She's 53. She's 13 years older than I am. She's practically ancient. Somebody get the dust pan in the room and just sweep the dust off of me. <laughs> You're how you're horrified at being 40 and I'm much older than you. That's okay. With age comes wisdom and experience. Not in your case though, but in most cases, yes. You know, there's something beautiful about an older person that they become comfortable in their own skin. And they know who they are and they know what they want. And they are mature. You know, a, an intelligent, mature person is like a bottle of fine wine. They have a lot more flavor to them. You know, a lot more seasoning. You, not so much. You're that bottle of wine that went sour and turned to vinegar to be thrown away. That's <laughs> <laughs> my delicious cake. What? Fake. <laughs> Thanks, babe. But I guess I noticed that he doesn't really care about his birthday. He doesn't do anything usually. He doesn't care to celebrate his birthday with you because you're no fun. I just like. Oh, now you're over there being party killer Patty. Of course, he's not going to celebrate with you. He can't do anything with you. Think about it, Chantal. You can't walk for more than a minute. You're out of breath when you do walk. Your face gets all kinds of red. You get sweaty. You complain about the heat. Anything you do has to involve air conditioning. Anywhere you go, it has to be an abandoned place or deserted. There can't be anybody there. You're always whining and complaining about every freaking thing. There has to be food in it for you somewhere. You're a party killer patty. You're not about going to a party and enjoying yourself and being around people and being sociable and talking and have a good time. The only reason why you go to parties is for the food. You'd be at the buffet table scarping up all the free food and you wouldn't care about the other guests. 
And then after you got done eating all the food, you would start whining and complaining. I want to go home. Take me home. I'm tired, Salah. My back, my sciatica. You're that person. You're the party killer, Patty. You're no fun. And if he likes to have fun, he can't have fun with you. So I'm sure he's going to celebrate with his friends and his family and you are not invited just to make sure that he can have fun and he's leaving your happy self at home. Planning and cooking three meals a day for yourself and then cleaning up after those meals and taking care of a home is like really. Yeah, but you don't do none of that. Challenging for me right now. And I'm just like in between like feeling a bit down at times from like thinking that like, you know, if I'm bored, like I try not to just like laze around as much anymore because. Okay. Chantal is so lost without food. Definitely get a hobby, sis. Agreed, Marley. She doesn't know how to do a live stream and not involve food. Talk about food, eat food, order food. She could do something right here, right now to distract herself from food. She could play video games. Didn't Salah give her over 2,000 plus video games when she first arrived? She got 2,000 plus games. She could make a gaming channel. And when you play a video game, that will distract you for at least a few hours, maybe more depending on the game. You guys know I play World of Warcraft. You can get lost in WoW for hours. Like easily, you like time flies in World of Warcraft. You know, pick a game or several games and, and play the game and, and just keep your mind off of food. Use it as a distraction. So you're not thinking about food. You're focused on something else and you're not bored and your, your attention is someplace else. Nope. She got too many bad habits. Rituals revolving around food. And when I say ritual, I don't mean like magical. You know, we're, we're, we're human and we all develop rituals and conditioning. Like the, if you get up in the morning, every morning and go to work at a certain time and then get in your car at a certain time and then get in the traffic and then go to work at a certain time. That itself is kind of like a ritual. That's your routine. She's got very unhealthy, toxic routines. Everything she does is about food, is very food-based. She sits down for a live stream. She's got to eat at the same time. Talking about food with her beezers, all of that. You take the food away, she don't know what to do with herself. I just want to like, I think of like, okay, like, you know, <laughs> hand to mouth. Like I still am only halfway, like less than halfway down the block, first block of the sharp cheddar. Like I would usually just eat a whole block in one day. Like what the heck? Things last a long And she wins the ER once for eating too much cheese. And she still continues to eat cheese this way with no gallbladder. Food lasts a long time when you eat it in moderation. Yeah, no kidding. You think? You think that if you eat in moderation, the things you buy last longer. What a concept. Oh, my God. You mean to tell me that if I have a box of cereal and I don't eat the whole box at once, it actually lasts for a day or two? Who thought this up? What sorcery is this? She's so... Out of the basket with portion control. She doesn't even know what a normal portion is. She has no idea of moderation or eating small amounts. She's under the idea that she has to eat large amounts to be full. No, you can eat a small amount and you're perfectly fine. You're not going to starve to death. You're not going to die. Just eat a little and wait. And if you need more, you can always go get more. The food's not going to run away. No one's going to take it away from you. Just eat a small portion and wait. Just wait. There's no, no harm in waiting. But no, she's got to eat everything like a termite. You know what the hell? <laughs> can we see cheese? Yeah, I can show you the cheese if you want. 
I don't love gory suits. I used to, but now I just don't have the the heart for it. Like I don't know. I heard that Terrifier three was disgusting, and people were walking up. Human Centipede, the first one was pretty cool. I liked it. The other ones are horrible. I can't watch them. They're gross. I don't know where my cat is. She's like not affectionate with me today that much. I don't know why. But I thought she loved you. I thought she loved you. That you are her favorite person, but yet she's not being affectionate today. Chantal, can I show you something? Hold on a minute. Let me show you something. Let me stop the screen for a minute. Look. All right, hold on. <sighs> my hand is in the way. Look what's on my bed. See that baby girl? She's well loved. Bulger. Hi, Bulger. Hey, Bogs. Hey, baby. My hand is in the way. Sorry. Let me just. There we go. That's better. Fix that. So there's Booger. Booger. Honey. That's my baby. And I'm her favorite person all day, every day. She really loves me today because I gave her her breakfast special treat. Ooh, she was eating it up. <laughs> Fancy feast, fish and shrimp. She loves that stuff. She's like just acting like Pac-Man. Anyway, let's 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 go back to Chantal. See what she has to say. All right. Oh, oops, wrong one. Wrong one. I'm in the wrong place. Okay, let's go. I got so excited because I got a new mop. Dude. <laughs> oh, because I was having trouble. Look at this cool mop. You know you're getting old when you're excited about a mop. <laughs> oh, and I'm excited because I got a new... They have a new scent. Well, I didn't see this before in the store. But Dettol? <laughs> it smells good. Mmm. Green apple. It's my favorite scent. I love it. Yeah, what happened with the Beezer spray? <laughs> Why not use the Beezer spray? So I'm excited to clean clean with these. My floors are like really spotless right now and shiny. And yeah. She's not gonna clean anything, liar. Hey Chantal, while you're cleaning your house, why don't you clean yourself too? Because if you're wanting Salah's attention, if you want him to get close to you, that's important. It's really, really important that you clean yourself. And you've got a washer and dryer there. Wash your doggone clothes, girl. Don't do like you did in Thailand and not wash your clothes for weeks. That's nasty. That makes me happy in life. <laughs> I'm upset. Like, I think, like, maybe instead of, like, being upset, I feel like, I don't know, that's my problem. I always have to be obsessed with something. So I'm like, I really need to try to be obsessed with something. Maybe, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to diagnose Chantal. Maybe it's because she's got an addictive personality. And again, that that requires therapy, counseling, uh, possibly psychotherapy, psychiatry, all that stuff. She needs professional help, period. Because she can't figure this out on her own. If she could have, it would have been done by now. But Dr. Armchair, you cannot be your own doctor, okay? You, you don't know what you're talking about. You're in the fire burning. You have that perspective. Other people are out, outside the fire watching you burn. They have the outside perspective. This thing with your food addiction, it's way over your head. You need help and you can't help yourself. Period. You can't help yourself. And it's arrogant for you to think that as extreme as your food issue is that you know what you're doing and you can get a hang on this thing. You can't. Something healthy, maybe cleaning. I know I'm so excited about cleaning products. I've got a whole new bottle of Windex, Clorox bleach. I'm bleaching my whole bathroom. I love it. I love that clean smell. I never used to, I hated cleaning before hate it i don't like it still stresses me out a bit because it's like physically challenging but i like the the result oh my god like chantal burning some calories watch out after what 
No, it's not your 12th birthday. <laughs> you can't be in here if you're 12. Are you doing anything for Halloween? I don't know. There's, I, I saw some like. I okay, here, here's, here's the feeling. I've talked to a few people. A few people have said that there is a possibility that Chantal might be going back to Canada around Christmas time. Because she would go back to Canada to get the gifts from family and, you know, do the green again. Like she, she goes back during the holidays just to get free stuff. Even though she, she can buy stuff, she likes to get free stuff from the relatives. Ads on TikTok for like some cool haunt looking haunted houses in Kuwait. So maybe we can do those on Halloween. No, we don't celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving. But it's like actually like supposed to be forbidden in Islam. I see if you look at this. She'll find a workaround. If she's in uh, Kuwait during Thanksgiving, she'll find a workaround because what is Thanksgiving for her? It's a time to eat a lot of food. You think she's going to pass that up? Eats and everything no i said like we were kind of like discussing buying it he was we were just worried about buying it because of the weight limit but he bought it i guess i don't know <laughs> he said he was like adamant he was going to when, when i was in bangkok and but then the weight limit and then i guess i don't know so basically what she's saying is allegedly salah bought a treadmill and he didn't take into account her weight, and according to him and her, the treadmill's not going to work. Salah, you're supposed to be all into fitness, right? You see the size of Chantal without the filters. So why wouldn't you consider her weight when buying something that's supposed to be for physical fitness? And there's no way that you can buy a treadmill to, that works for her under $600. It's, it's going to be expensive to be sturdy enough to support all of her weight and her moving on it. It's going to be $600, $700, $800, $1,000, maybe more than $1,000. Yeah, he's not going to spend that money on a piece of equipment that she will refuse to use. It's not going to happen, y'all. No. He'd rather spend that money on the Timu mobile before he drops it on a treadmill. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal because it's not that much more. I can't remember what the, what it is, the KG, but <clears throat> there's no gym yet. Why are you guys so obsessed? When it does happen, are you going to shut up or what? What? Like, why do you care so much? I don't get it. <laughs> Marley, what'd you do? I know it was made to seem that way, that it was like done and everything, but I think that he thought it would be, but it's not. So that's it. That's There's nothing more to it, you know? Yeah, okay. I addressed it and now I'm moving on. I love all your cycles. I don't care what others say. Yeah, anymore, it's not a cycle. It's a circle because he just keeps going around and around and around and around and around and around and we just can't get off that Ferris wheel. Let me off. Ugh. I kind of feel like making something small to eat. Julia's in the window, I think. I haven't seen her in a while. Oh yeah, Jam, uh, that, even if that was the case, it, it takes all day to do that, right? Like, I mean, it doesn't take all day. The uh, hell? People are stupid. I'll bring you guys with me, but don't mind the little bit of clutter. Whoa. That's all I gotta show you the, the cheeses. That's sweet. Okay, you little friggin' buggers. You wanna see the cheese? <laughs> All right, so I opened a new pack of cheese today. Use them for breakfast. I still have the thing of halloum. Halloumi. Still have half a bag of matzah. 
still have the whole other bag of matzah. Still have grape leaves. Can I just say something that, that she lives alone and she's got entire full ass fridge full of food. There's no way that she can finish all that food before some of it goes bad. With the cheese slices. Where's the rest of the halloumi? Oh, I think I cut it up. Oh, there's another. Yeah, address the juices. Address them. There they are. Right here. Address them. And these aren't the only ones. These are just the ones in the side door. That wasn't part of your grocery haul, Chantal. You're a diabetic, Chantal. You shouldn't be drinking that stuff, Chantal. There's still some cheese slices from that one. Whole block of cheese. This block of cheese is half about halfway that done. It's way too much cheese, though. I know so. Uh, oh, red onions smell up your entire. Oh, she took the juices out because the last haul she did, she showed the juices and it was noticed and she moved them. Look, because the juices were sitting right here and she put the mangoes up there instead. Uh, any other cheese here? Oh, this is the feta cheese mix. This is still un is this? Yeah, unopened. And then the big block of cheese here. That's crazy to have that much cheese. Oh. <sighs> cheese Pro Max. Cheese Pro Max. All right, let me get my meal. You could get a crock pot, and those are fairly cheap, or a pressure cooker. And there's all kinds of healthy meals you can make in a pressure cooker. And it's just like, you put stuff in the pressure cooker or the crock pot and let it cook all day, and it doesn't make a mess. And there's plenty of recipes on YouTube where you can make all kinds of healthy meals. What is the like? One, eat healthy, and you... Maybe you don't have the stamina to cook. Stand on your feet. Get a freaking crock pot or a pressure cooker or an air fryer. Basically, an air fryer between the air fryer and the crock pot. That's all you need. That's it. You can make so much stuff in both of those. That's not a good sign. I'm not in the best of shape. That's for sure. And here's my like I had an air fryer once, and I got to tell y'all, I made some chicken. In the air fryer, it was the crispiest chicken I'd ever had. It was so good. Salad. It's like a fatouche, pomegranates, olives, very Middle Eastern. Let's try this out. This is hot chili sauce, but it has like a, with garlic and herbs. It's bomb. It's lesson. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Wait. What did you say? It's bussin? There's a channel on YouTube, a gentleman who makes um, jailhouse meals. I'm sorry, I, I can't think of his name right now, but that's that's basically his tagline. It's bussin'. So I take it you've been watching that channel, Chantal? When I'm off track or eating very... Because that's not a word she normally uses. Where did she get that from? That's not her word. Healthy or whatever. But I find that my weight goes up to like... Went up to like 166 here before. And I weighed myself today, but it was after breakfast and it was 154 point something kgs. I'll get my um my my microphone. BRB. Tuna onion breath. Not good for birthday boy, but yeah, happy birthday, honey. Come kiss me. And I smell like garlic and onion. Okay. Birthday man. Hey. After my snack, you can come play if you want. I'll try to play happy birthday. I'll sing happy birthday for you. Please get a mic for just reason. She sounds like she's... So she did this live and if it's his birthday, shouldn't he be there? 
in the live with her to help celebrate his birthday, considering it's his birthday. And she's doing a live herself. It's like she couldn't stand the thought of it being somebody else's birthday and not getting attention. So she's doing a live, expecting people to send her super chats and give her memberships for what? It's not her birthday. She's not doing anything. It's not her special day, but she's trying to make it into her special day. Partially because she's mad because he didn't go out and get a birthday cake for her. <laughs> Put up a girlfriend. Birthday cake power pellet denied, Pac-Man. I mean, I remember my first car accident. It's really, I still remember it, every detail because it was traumatic. I was in the car with my mom and dad when they were together. I think they were getting back together. I don't know. And he was trying to change the channel on the radio. And he swerved off the road. I was in the middle in the front seat. Remember when cars in the old cars had middle seats in the front? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. We rolled over. We ended up upside down. It was bad. No one was hurt. Thank goodness. But What are you eating? Anime. Oh, oh, there she goes. She's supposed to be eating healthy. That's not healthy. Sucks. So I don't have she just couldn't help herself. It's like, I gotta eat, I gotta eat, I gotta eat. I have enough time to make and improve my fat first daily for <laughs> What? How do I improve my time management? Thanks for the super chat and the weird best thing. <laughs> anime sucks. I don't even know what you're into. I'm not gonna judge, but I don't know. Yeah, like anime sucks is one of her top tippers in super chats on her channel right now. And he, not only is he into the much bigger ladies, but considering what I saw on Twitter, he's also into people who pass gas. And in my opinion, when Chantal was in Thailand away from Salah, she was doing the most to cater to anime sucks by talking constantly about pooping her pants. And I had an accident and, she was passing gas and giggling about it. So she was making anime sucks very happy. And now that she's back in Kuwait with Salah, she kind of has to watch her manners a little bit more. She certainly can't be pooping her pants and sitting on the couch. And she can't be getting on camera passing gas the way she was. So I'm wondering if that would mean that anime sucks is not going to give her much in the way of money. I don't know what that means. The bad side. No. Leave Julia alone. Bite her, Julia. Get her. <laughs> Ow, her tooth. Vulgar. Maybe when I'm a bit smaller. Because there's really nice bicycle pathways down by the Kuwait Towers. Yeah, vulgar. That's a good idea. I used to bike everywhere. When I was a teenager, I did a lot of biking. I got my bike stolen a lot of times. Basically we didn't do biking, you liar. I used to have a Peugeot. My dad bought me all my bicycles, actually. Okay, hold on a minute. We're, we're going to do something real quick. Come here. You're not in trouble? Come here. You didn't do anything bad yet. <laughs> There's the bulger. Everybody likes to see that you're here with me. Hey, bulgs. Do you see how I'm holding her, Chantal? She's secure. She feels safe. Yet at the same time, she's got freedom of movement. I am not forcefully holding on to her. And when if you want to know what a cat's mood is, you, you watch their ears and you watch their tail. It's a baby look at you look at the little face. If a cat's ears are laid all the way back, that means they are very irritated. If they're kind of flattened and not going to V-shape, that means they might be hunting or they're, you know, they're feeling kind of frisky. But if a cat is irritated, they'll they'll flick that tail around. Oh, are we doing something? Look, this is what we're doing. Look at this. This is what she likes to do with me. This is what we do all the time. She loves it when I wear hoodies. She likes to cuddle against her mother. She's a baby. But even when he's holding her like this, I am not holding her tight, tight. 
I just got her secured in my arms, but she can move any way she wants. So she feels safe. But you're still getting the little chin scratches. You like the chin scratches. Who's the baby? You guys can't hear her. She's purring. This is what a well-loved cat looks like, Chantal. When a cat loves you and they feel secure with you. Yes, they are. Yes. See, I'm I'm not like gripping onto her to, to keep her in my arms. She's just here. You can get up anytime you want. Yes. But I have to let you down. I got to finish the react. I'm sorry. I'll hold you like a baby later. All right. I got to let you down. Here, unhook your claws from the hoodie. There you go. Down. All right. Just wanted to give Chantal an example of how to correctly hold a cat because I don't think she knows. I don't think she has any freaking idea. We've only got like a minute or so left. Let's finish this off. No cake in support of me not being able to eat any. Right. If I can't have a cake, then you can't. Oh, he's going to have his birthday cake. It's just going to be with his family and his friends that he actually does care about. He's not going to have it in front of you because you're such a glutton. You would claim the cake as your own. He wouldn't get any of it. I don't blame him. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself, Chantal, that it's somebody else's birthday. And because of you, they can't even have a birthday cake. Because you're such a glutton that you would eat it all. You would eat somebody else's birthday cake. I don't think I can cut out cheese, honestly. I can cut out a lot of other things right now, but not cheese right now. It's really just like, I don't know, it's, it has a lot of cholesterol, but it's also like very satiating in a lot of ways. You're using the cheese as a pacifier. You're using the food as a pacifier to pacify your urges, your cravings, to keep the boredom away, using it as a crutch. This is not healthy. It is Maybe it's because it's like a protein and fat, you know? It's all fat. Cheese is fat. You've already gone to the ER because of cheese once, Chantal. Do you want it to happen again? I love how serious you are about cheese. Cheese? Booger. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like life like, well, in some ways, yes. You know, some ways, yes. I mean, I'm obese and I have... Uh, you know, issues with food like she did. So, and a cheese addiction. <laughs> so, big back, big back. I already said at the beginning of the stream, he's not celebrating his birthday. <laughs> so who cares? What she means is, if he's not going to celebrate his birthday with me the way that I want him to, then we're not going to celebrate it at all. She is like an adult toddler doing a temper tantrum she wants his birthday celebrated a certain way it has to involve food it has to involve him taking her out to eat maybe going to a movie it has to involve a cake and if he's saying no we're not doing any of that then her point of view is fine we'll just sit here at the apartment and be bored all night And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put you on camera, even though you don't want to be on camera. That is her punishment of him. Like, if you're not going to do your birthday the way that I want you to, which involves me getting treated like a queen and getting what I want, if you're not going to give me what I want, I'm going to punish you. I'm putting you on camera. You're not going to get a cake over here. You are not endearing yourself to that man, Chantal, by being childish and trying to punish him. All you're doing is making him go further and further and further away from you. You do realize that, right? It's weird. You want his affection. You want his attention. And then you act this way. 
you act vengeful and wrathful and spiteful, and then you wonder why. Why do guys leave me? Because you're wrathful and spiteful and mean. That's why, stupid. Duh. One me. So, King Bees, are you going to be on camera tonight or no? Okay, you know what? Let me just set the stage for a minute. Just imagine. You're supposed to be celebrating your birthday with your spouse. And she's doing a live. And she's laying down on the couch. Does that point to a joyous birthday celebration? Like you are on another couch away from her playing the keyboard. And she's on another couch ceiling. Yeah, you, you guys are really tearing it up. Season three is definitely lit. Oh. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at him. He looks like he'd be anywhere beyond where he's at. Salah, you look tired. I'm giving my opinion. You look tired. And what is going on with those filters? Do y'all see what I see? Look at his arm. He's got Popeye arms. <laughs> Uh, look, I'm just pointing out the discrepancy of the filter. Look, does he not look like he's got Popeye arms right here? His arms look a lot longer than what they should be. Why? Weird. <laughs> There's a handsome man. What's up, guys? How are you doing? <laughs> so there are a couple. He's not even sitting on the couch next to her. Where is he? He's across the room. Wow. Even on a live, maintaining your distance, huh, Salah? Tell me y'all are fighting without telling me you're fighting. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear his crap. I No, 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 no. I don't want to hear his stupid keyboard. <laughs> where, where do you turn the sound off? How about that? Like, this is how he's spending his birthday. Playing his crappy keyboard. For a woman who's ceiling on the couch. Yeah, good times. <laughs> Marley, I love your edits. This video. Yeah, you guys, you got a picture of what Salah's birthday was like. How they were really tearing it up. They said season three is gonna be lit. Is is this what they meant? Because I'm not I'm not getting it. But remember, girl world, remember and keep in mind them and and keep telling this to Chantal if she says anything. Just as she is not responsible to trigger anybody, we are not responsible if we trigger her. Let's level that playing field. If we trigger her in any way, it's not our fault. It's her responsibility, right? Right. So I guess we can say what we want on Twitter. And we can say what we want in our lives. And we can say what we want in our videos. And on our community pages. And she should not be reading and getting triggered. Because it's not our responsibility. Exactly. So if she says anything, remind her of that. She needs to be reminded because Chantal forgets a lot. Okay. So that was it for this react. I, I was going to react to Chantal's mega birthday live video, but this react is already long enough. I would like to say thank you to Marley Hendricks for creating this video, like the highlights of it all. And I'm going to leave a link for Marley's original video down below. Please check them out if you haven't already. Give a nice comment, a like, a sub. Let them know you like their channel. And I'm going to end it here and post this to YouTube. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.